Good evening, bonsoir, Annie. Welcome to Space Trivia with Science North. This program was undertaken with funding from the Canadian Space Agency. So have a blast with us right now, testing your knowledge against other live viewers for a chance to win Science North swag or passes. All you need is a mobile device to play along. And that's not all. If you were at the first event and you register for the next two, you also have the chance to win a Science North membership. Even if you don't win at trivia, you'll be put in a draw. So right now, go to the web address on the screen, mentimeter.com and enter uh, the code at the top of, on the screen there. Or you can use your camera app to scan the QR code. So once you get in, um, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Did that just show the first answer? Oh no, that's not okay. Let me make sure that our um, answers are all, unless somebody is already answering. Here we go, hold on. Um, okay, reset results, all slides. Okay, <laughs> don't want anyone getting ahead. Okay, so while you guys are joining, um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Olathe. I am the staff scientist for Space Place and the Planetarium at Science North. And our special guest today is a fellow scientist and space science communicator, Dr. Cass Marion. Hey, everyone. Hey, Cass. So Cass is the science advisor for the Canada Aviation in and Space Museum. Uh, she's a geologist and she has some pretty awesome field experience. So this evening, you're going to have the opportunity to test your space knowledge against Cass's, <laughs> but she is also here to answer your questions. So go ahead and leave those in the comments for us. All right. Oh, we have a lot of people here. Awesome. This is so good. Okay. Um, so if you are still joining um, at this moment, uh, you can use the instructions at the top of the screen. There are also instructions um, pinned to the top of the live chat and in the description of the event. So there's still time to join. Um, we are streaming from Sudbury, Ontario in Swakamak. Um, we are in the traditional and ancestral territory of the Atikmishing, Anishinaabek, and Wanapate First Nations. This land sits in the Robertson Huron Treaty area. If you are joining us live, please share where you're joining us from. Uh, acknowledge the land that you're on if you're comfortable doing that. It's uh, definitely important. And share your your comments, your questions, maybe even your corrections throughout the event there in the comments. Okay, well, it looks like we have a whole lot of people here. So I'm going to just jump in with our very first question to just get us started. All right, here we go. So you, um, you will get, uh, let's see, and <laughs> you'll get more points if you answer fast. So our first question here is, what are the two dominant geological processes on the surface of the moon? So is it erosion and volcanism, impact cratering and volcanism, or glaciation and impact cratering? That was a really quick one. Let's give you more time on the next one. I was gonna say that one by fast. <laughs> um, maybe because I just, I added that one in. Okay. but. All good. Most of you got this one. So, um, Cass, you study craters. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit, a bit more about this? Sure. Uh, so, yeah, impact cratering and volcanism, definitely the two most dominant surface processes on the moon. If you look up at the moon at night, you can see that it's covered in craters. And you'll also see, you know, the, the white, you know, there's the lighter part of the moon and the darker parts of the moon. Uh, those darker parts that we call those mare, those are ancient volcanic lava flows. So that's where the volcanism comes in. Um, and then the rest is just covered in crater. There are uh, hundreds of thousands of craters on the moon. 
uh, all shapes and sizes. And the best part is that they're really well preserved on the moon. And so they're, they're kind of like the best uh, place to study them. Right, because of course we don't have erosion on the moon because we don't have weather and there is ice on the moon, but not glaciers. So, um, <laughs> so it's, it's really well preserved. And I mean, sometimes when we're looking up at the moon, like even with the naked eye, right, we can see these craters and it, it seems like the moon is so close, but it's actually pretty far away. So like if I were to hold up an, a quarter as the earth and a dime as the moon, you know, you might think maybe they're like this, right? But we, you know, casted some quick math um, before we started this, <laughs> and they're actually more like, like this, like it's like, like 75 centimeters apart at this scale. So it's pretty far away. Yeah. Um, which brings us to our next question. There is a plan to return humans to the moon. True Ooh. or false? I mean, it's pretty awesome to explore the moon from Earth, just looking at it. But imagine actually getting to explore that landscape um, yourself. Is that something? Is that something you'd be interested in doing, Cass? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> It's, you know, uh, the moon, like like you just saw, is full of craters. It's kind of like a crater geologist's happy place. <laughs> you can just go anywhere and, and it's funny. It's, yeah, it's be the funnest place. And we haven't been back in so long. We, we haven't been to the moon since 1972, which is almost, well, actually, yeah, you're, uh, it's the 50, 50th anniversary, like the end of this year. Yeah, the last time we were since there. the last time we were there. So, so what do you think? Do we have a plan? Do we have a plan to return? Absolutely. Yes. No? yes? Yeah, true? Of course, <laughs> we're going back. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Let's see how many of our viewers. Yes. Whoa. 59. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. All right. Next question. Here we go. So, Canada is one of the 13 countries that have signed the Artemis Accord. True or false? Mm -hmm. so the Artemis Accord, um, for those of you who may not have heard, is sort of, well, Cass, can you can you ex explain it for our, for our guests? Uh, the Artemis Accord is basically an agreement um, based on the Artemis program for, for the return that said return to the moon. Um, it basically outlines that we're we're going to go back. We're going to do it, you know, collaboratively, internationally, and we're going to do it with uh, in a peaceful manner. It will be yeah. entirely we're gonna, peaceful. We're going to follow the United Nations sort of principles for for cooperation and, and mm -hmm. civil exploration of the moon, right? And yeah. and the use of the moon, Mars, and and comets and asteroids. Even they're, that's part of that agreement for like peaceful purposes. So this yeah. is yeah. So there, it stemmed from like the international treaty. And is Canada part point. of it, Cass? Are we? Yes, it's got to be part of it. We're one of the major face faring countries. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> We're doing this. We're I'm doing that job of watching the clock. <laughs> got to get my answers in. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the Artemis program a bit. Let's start with the logo. So. It's up, it's there on your screen. So the Artemis program logo does not, does not include this element, an A, the moon, the earth, a hunky star man, or the flight trajectory to get to the moon. So we can see actually there are a lot of similar elements between these two logos. Um, yeah. Yeah. So know. the... The Starman makes me immediately think of SpaceX's Starman. Oh yeah, it was actually and, a reference to Don't Look Up. Oh really? <laughs> In that movie, Don't Look Up? I have, but I don't remember a Starman. There's a meme, they're like, it's there, oh no, it's, um. there's a tweet and it's like a hunky Starman meow. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, there was so many ridiculous social media references in that movie. Though. It was good. It was, it was really good. good. It was really good. So I couldn't help. I couldn't help like putting that in here. Oh, okay. Hands up. What is it? Yes, you guys got it. There is not a hunky star man, no star man. Uh, in the Artemis logo, but there certainly was one in the Apollo logo. Um, so if we were looking at this image, you can see those stars there. 
Um, the three stars that make the cross on the A, those are the three stars in Orion's belt, and the rest of the constellation is there. So Orion, who was, um, you know, renowned as being a, a handsome, you know, uh, big hunter, <laughs> big kind of a hunky man, and he's made out of stars. So there it is. But you can also see on the moon, there's a face there. So whose face would that be? Do you know you know this cast, right? The sort of like Apollo's face. I yeah, right. Yeah, Apollo. It looks like it. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's hard to make it. But Apollo was like a Greek god, and he was the Greek god of the sun, and he was really beautiful. He's like the most beautiful god. So <laughs> two hunky star men in the first one, but this one is different. And um, part of the emphasis that there's a difference between Artemis and Apollo. It's one of the reasons that they kind of slanted that. Um, trajectory. So we see the, the A there. Um, there's lots of other fun little, um, if you go to the, the NASA website and you read up on this, there's lots of really interesting um, tidbits in there. Um, and one of them is uh, actually that the, I don't, I don't know if this will give, give anything away. Let's do the next question. And then we'll <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's like, there's double meanings, right? The A is the rocket ship, and it's also something else. Okay, so Artemis is the Greek goddess of the, the moon, the hunt, or both. So we know she was Apollo's twin sister. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there are, there's some symbols in that logo that relate to her as well, um, specifically. Mm. But so I know you're a geologist, Cass. So this isn't your, <laughs> this isn't your area of expertise, <laughs> so geology. But you, you know, do you know this one? <laughs> uh i'm pretty sure yeah i'm pretty sure it's definitely moon because apollo was the sun god um mm -hmm. and artemis is moon but may or may not be hunt as well most of those gods are you know they have a long list of god of the because apollo was yeah, god of many many the things torch bearer. she's the torch bearer as <laughs> yeah. well uh -huh. Yeah, I, I would guess both, awesome just because woman. just because they're they've got so many things under the belt. <laughs> <laughs> nice, and it is both. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. nobody knew that. So um, this is a this is a sculpture. Um, this is actually uh, a, it's actually of Diana, so the Roman goddess associated with Artemis, um, and it's a copy of a Greek sculpture. So if anyone out there has read uh, the Percy Jackson series, um, <laughs> then you know that uh, the Greeks and Romans had different versions of, you know, basically the same gods and goddesses. So we use the Roman names for the planets, uh, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, and Neptune. Earth is just named after the ground. Um, and we're using uh, Greek names for, for the moon missions. So that's kind of cool. And so in that logo that we were looking at, the crescent, the blue crescent that represents Earth uh, is also her bow. And the A is also the point of an arrow because she's got that quiver of arrows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but Orion, the hunky star man, has not been totally left out. <laughs> he now has this mission element named after him. So is it the launch vehicle, the spacecraft, or the space suit? that we're using to go to. Uh, hmm. uh, this one I know, but I actually hadn't seen this logo before. It's pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. So we've got That's the three fun. stars there that are like, like it. The three stars in Orion's belt. And of course, Orion is beautiful right now. And um, he was just uh, really close to the full moon. We had our first full moon uh, on Monday, the, like, the first January full moon. Um, it was beautiful. And the moon's higher in the sky in the winter too. And it, it looked really, it looks really cool out there with Orion. So Orion's lined up perfectly in my backyard. So yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, this is a uh oh <laughs> a couple more seconds, but um, I'm definitely <laughs> going to say it's the spacecraft. Um that's gonna bring astronauts back to the moon uh, they can, yes. can hold up to six astronauts but they're probably going to send four at a time starting out yeah yeah most of you got that so this is what it looks like um this is uh this is <laughs> for, for scale <laughs> um so i was able to um be down in texas and to, to actually see this capsule and you can see it's not a lot of space and this is the vehicle that we're planning to send people to mars with right 
Yeah, originally, I think it was back in 2005, they started designing it for Mars and then plans change. <laughs> but the idea is that we'll, we'll still use it to go to Mars, right? Like yep, the moon is do. a stepping stone to Mars. Yep, absolutely. I, I mean, we could still use it. I don't, you know, the, as I said, the plans keep changing, but it's definitely going to go to the moon. <laughs> and maybe we might want a bit more space if we're going to, because we might send six people to Mars. So this yeah. it has capacity for six, but that'd be a long, because how long is it going to, would it take us to get to Mars? Uh, about seven months. But Yeah, that's a long time. Um, but you know about, you know, having to live in close quarters, right? Because you've done some yeah. field work, some analog work, um, and you know, you get, you get pretty close, right? But you had your own tent, yeah? Did you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, so this is an expedition to train astronauts. Um, there's two astronauts in this photo, uh, one Canadian and one Artemis astronaut, actually. Um, and yeah, we, we spent a couple of weeks in, in an isolated or remote spot in northern Labrador to, uh, to train these guys to prepare for the moon because uh, we were in an impact crater in Labrador. Wow, that is so awesome. And so this um, photo was taken by uh, Dr. Gordon Ozinski. So that's mm -hmm. aka Oz. He's there in the front. You can see selfie mode there. Yep. And then we've got our Canadian astronaut, Josh Kutrick, over on, on the right there. Yeah, far right. Mm -hmm. There's you in the and middle. then next, I'm in the center. And then to my left is Matthew Dominic. And Oz is the, I guess, the, the, the lead of the expedition. So he was um, heading up the training and I got to, to help out in any which way I could and be that base camp manager. So cool. All right, okay, next question. <laughs> tangent, <laughs> tangent. <laughs> so um, Canada's contributions to Artemis include, you know, you can see we're training their astronauts. Um, uh, like <laughs> but astronauts, uh, Canada Arm 3, a rover and science instrument science or all of these? Hmm. <laughs> well, I can tell you that the Artemis plans are uh, lengthy and um, exciting. <laughs> and this, I mean, we're going to do so many things. Um, and so many different nations are going to do them all together. Um, I like, what does this comic say? Snow? Snow tires. Snow tires. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are Canadians are really you know, have some, some expertise in extreme environments. Um, yeah. I mean, that's Canada, what we're on the greenhouse thing too, right? Like growing, growing plants in extreme environments. So. It's an interesting choice of tires for this because you can't actually use air pumped up tires on the moon because you're in a vacuum. <laughs> but I'm going to go all of these. <laughs> all of, yes, we're doing all of these. Oh, my God. It's amazing. Yeah. Right. We are sending astronauts. We're going to have a Canadian astronaut on the second Artemis mission. The first one uh, is a robotic mission that goes around the moon just as a test. It, test. It's going to be autonomous. This, and the second mission that's going to basically take Orion and, and do a loop around the moon and come back is going to have a Canadian astronaut on it. And that's going to happen uh, as soon as next year. Wow. Even I, think, I think you might have given it a little bit away, but I hope everyone was listening closely. Oh. <laughs> um, so here's, a, here's a really cool um, artist representation of uh, Canada Arm 3 on the proposed gateway space station that would be in orbit around the moon. And oh. if you go back, that's, that's like the evolved version. So the early versions of this won't have as many modules on it. <laughs> yeah, and you can see Orion like kind of stuck on the end there too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Orion's going to kind of launch and then dock, and then the astronauts can go down to the moon from there. And uh, rovers, of course, uh, the Canadian Space Agency just has a fleet of rovers. I think thirteen different rovers. Is that depends on when <laughs> they have lots. <laughs> they have lots, <laughs> and you've gotten to work with some, right? I think we have. A yeah. Few um, uh, I haven't got to. I haven't got to work with this one. That um, this one's that I can't remember. The, the, the acronym lunar is like Lailer. Yeah, Lailer Lunar Exploration yeah. Light Rover. So yeah. it's the largest and fastest rover that the Canadian yeah. Space Agency has. And then of course our wonderful astronauts. Um, yeah. So Jenny Sidey Gibbons is um, sitting on the jet there. And then from left to right, we have David St. Jacques, Joshua Kutrick, and Jeremy Hansen. So that's uh, those are the folks that, that might, might get to go. 
Yeah. And I got to go on expeditions with both uh, Josh and Jeremy. So they're they're great they're people. To, to, they're all all of them are wonderful people. Yeah. So yeah. I met <laughs> Jeremy and Josh during astronaut selection, and um, okay. Jeremy came to Science North for a visit. So they're definitely I can they're, they're awesome awesome folks. Yeah. All right, so um, NASA is aiming to land a woman on the moon as soon as uh, this 2025, <laughs> 2030, 2035, 2050. I think someone was asking in the comments um, when a woman might be going back. Now, have you seen this this comic book, this first first woman comic book that NASA's created? I've seen the ad for it. I haven't actually seen the comic itself, just this front page sort of thing. Yeah. So we have Renata running running tech in the background as always. And she <laughs> will go ahead and drop a link to that in the chat. It's it's a really cool comic and um it has a augmented reality component. Um she has a best friend that's an AI that you can kind of interact with and you can see the the spacesuits and lots of really cool information if you're interested in learning more about the Artemis program. Okay, Cass, like, what do you think? I mean, I'm just asking for what NASA's aiming for right now, not when you yeah. think we'll actually get a woman on the moon. <laughs> well, I had mentioned that probably next year we'll be going around the moon, and then by 2025, they're hoping to land. Yes, <laughs> and everyone was listening, <laughs> or they already knew. <laughs> That's really soon. <laughs> so there's definitely a lot of you know complicated elements, comms, spacesuits, all kinds of things that, you know, could hold us up, but it's good to have uh, stretch goals. Yeah. Oh, actually, I just realized, I think they pushed, I think they pushed Artemis 2 to 2024 now. So that makes even more sense. Yeah. yeah. So 2024, we'll go Canadian and go around and then hopefully we'll land the following year. And while we're talking about, um, about this, uh, women doing amazing things in space for the first time. Who was the first Canadian woman to fly in space? Oh, Roberta Ponder. Roberta Ponder. <laughs> oh, wow, that one really, are they all in the same time? <laughs> uh, no, that was another one I just added in because uh, um, I found out that um, it's it's the 30th anniversary of her space flight this weekend, which yeah. I didn't realize, but- um, Ooh, 22nd, yeah. Yeah, so she was in space from January uh, 22nd to 30th in 1992. And um, there is going to be a really fun um, event to celebrate this. She's going to be there. You could meet her. Um, Renata will, will drop the, the link if you would like to register for that event. It's this Saturday at 6 p.m. So I'm going to be there. It's going to be fun. She is an amazing woman. I also got to meet her. She came to the planetarium and um, consoled me on not making the cut. <laughs> <laughs> she was well, very I'm jealous. I've never met <laughs> her, but I, um, I've, I've seen her talk. She's, she's a fantastic speaker. Yeah, she's really inspiring. And the work she's doing right now is amazing. I'm, I'm looking forward to learning more about it. But as I understand it, she's doing sort of, it's like a sci art um, project looking at um, photographs of migrating birds and, you know, that like that leading into corridor protection. Mm -hmm. So she's a huge environmental advocate, as is her foundation. And, um, also, I mean, of course, huge contributions to space medicine. So amazing woman. Absolutely. Amazing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So this brings up a question. Well, kind of. Um, why are we going to the moon? <laughs> like, it's all just, it's craters, right? I mean, it's, it's not a geologist. Okay, so we're doing it to uh, demonstrate new tech for space exploration, learn about the origins and history of Earth inspire a generation to study STEM or maybe STEAM. I mean, we at Science North, we're really, we're into oh. the STEAM. Yeah, you need the art. Um, <laughs> or is it for economic opportunities or or is it all of these? All of these things. Mm, tantalizing questions. Um, they're all really good answers. We're definitely, you know, from my perspective, we're going for scientific discovery, right? Mm. So that could kind of take part That's in like, a lot of those different things yeah like the origins and history of earth and not just yeah. earth really right like the whole solar system and yep yeah because yeah, studying the rocks i mean that's really looking into the history of the moon and the history of the formation of, of the earth so that's why but uh, i would go for all of the above definitely oh, yeah yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> you guys know that okay you know what though it's not always going to be the right answer <laughs> Not all, always all of the above. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> all, 
Okay, so which type of scientist has already visited the moon? Hmm. Hmm. So is it a chemist, a geologist, a biologist, or an astronomer? I feel like this image is, is giving you a few hints. <laughs> so, so who is Based that? The, you know who that, that is, right? That looks to be Harrison Schmidt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, he was and on the can... last mission, the Apollo 17 yep. mission. Yeah. So they didn't, they didn't actually send a scientist until the last mission. I know. So sad. But I mean, at least he got there eventually. And... <laughs> And we'll, we're going back. So, and this time I hope when we go back that we will be able to, to send a few more scientists. I'm really hoping biologists get to go. I studied biology to go to space. <laughs> I'm hoping <laughs> biologists get to go because you need life stuff. There's huge things going on with like, you know, uh, deep space and growing plants and things. So there you go. But mm -hmm. of course my favorite type of scientist uh, is Harrison Schmidt, who's a geologist, <laughs> of course. Of course. Um, and I got to, I did get to meet uh, Harrison Schmidt once. Um, he came to Western on a, to give a talk and he needed a ride back to the airport, like a two hour drive. And so my husband and I gave him a drive, gave him a ride uh, in our beat up old Toyota. And he, but he was a good sport about it. <laughs> yeah, that is so awesome. <laughs> that is um, awesome. More... Uh, like in sequence. He talked about how um, walking on the moon was kind of like cross country skiing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 They had to um, hop. We did not have to hop here, though. This is this is on top of a of a hill in Labrador. The one of the reasons why we brought the astronauts to train in this crater is because the rocks are uh, made up of anorthosites, which uh, it's a big word, but it just means the white stuff on the moon. All the broken up rocks, um, the the whiter part of the moon. Is, this, and we have that picture is, here right. too. That yeah, perfect. Um, and so this is Oz and the astronauts there. And the, the background, those cliffs, that's basically moon rock cliff. It's it's a cliff that's made up of the same rocks that are on the the that are dominant on the South Pole region of the moon, which is where we're hoping to go to land when we go back. Yes. By the way, thanks for all the heart spamming. I'm, I'm just really enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, so much, so much love. So, so much, much love. moon love. So much moon love. Okay, <laughs> and let's see who is getting the love right now in terms of it is Stupefly. Well done. Congratulations. You are at the top here. This is Super. very exciting. Um, We are halfway through, so if you are not at the top, you still have a chance to get there. And while we have a moment, let's go ahead and see um, what kind of questions we have in, in the comments section. Okay, so we had a where is this? I think that was for the, the geology image. So you were in... Um, was that the Mistaston Lake Crater in Northern Labrador? Northern so, Labrador. Yeah. Yes. Close to the Quebec border, but uh, quite a ways in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of Labrador. It's a beautiful, beautiful place, um, and it's actually on uh, Mushwau Inu lands, and, and um, they were kind enough to let us uh, go and do our expedition there and participated in the expedition as well. And I see um, there's some, some discussion of the, the twin experiment, so sending people um, into space for, for long durations. Um, there is uh, some astronauts that were... The Kellys? Yes, the Kellys. <laughs> Mark Kelly's, yeah, they did a really fantastic job of, of a variety of sort of medical experiments, comparing, you know, one on the ground and one in space, and and um, yeah, they made some some leaps, some like leaps and bounds to see, you know, what what actually changes when you go into space. Yeah, and that's actually um, Roberta Bondar. Her research, she did a bunch of experiments um, for the international community uh, when she was on Discovery um, during her flight, like for space station. Mm -hmm. um, and then when she got back to Earth, she kept doing research on the effects um, of microgravity on the human body. So her um, work has contributed to preparing us for these like longer duration missions. Cool. Canada yeah. just just reported uh, new results from a recent medical um, experiment done on the ISS too. Apparently our bodies uh, tend to destroy red blood cells in space a lot yeah. faster than they would around. Yeah. yeah. Lots really of challenges. Interesting. 
All right, are you guys ready for some more challenges as well? <laughs> so, here we go. More rocks. More rocks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's the question. Um, Artemis oh, one will oh. be a, and you can kind of, there's a bit of a hint here with the mission patch. Um, well, no, not really, but <laughs> okay. A three day <laughs> mission, a three week mission, or a three year mission. Um, the thing about the patch is, uh, so here you can see really uh, highlighted there is the space launch system. So do, do you want to talk a bit? I don't, I know space launch systems aren't your area, Cass. It's all good. Uh, well, yeah, it's a, a short for SLS. It's, um, you know, NASA's giant new big rocket and the Orion spacecraft will be sitting on top of it. It's about the same height as the Saturn V rocket, but it's a bit more powerful. Um, they keep saying it's like the most powerful rocket ever, but the SpaceX's Starship is more powerful. <laughs> it's just not, you know, going to be flying it. But it is a really powerful, pretty awesome rocket, uh, and it's going to take some people back to the moon. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. But it'll be about, the mission will be about 26 days, so three weeks to a month. Yeah, three weeks to a month. There's some wiggle room there. Yeah. So nicely done, everyone. <laughs> OK. Here's a, just like a, it is <laughs> when you tell those shots, like, it's just like a, mm, look at that rocket. It's huge. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is at the, at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida and in, in the Bay. Okay. Artemis 2, the next step, will mm -hmm. set a record for <laughs> farthest a human has traveled away from Earth longest a human has lived in space or most people in a spacecraft at one time hmm. this is a quick one too i'm sorry guys oh, wow. <laughs> you got it. you're, you're there pretty much most just... and most of you got it yeah so it's gonna go like past the moon right well it's just that it or its orbit is going is you know much rounder so yeah i like it or maybe more elliptical in a sense but it just as it orbits the moon it goes quite a, a ways away so i think it's some 40 to 60 thousand kilometers further i think the the record before artemis or i guess the current record is from a, uh, apollo 13 um and then yeah this will just blow that out of the water <laughs> um okay and then artemis 3 is going to establish a permanent permanent human settlement on the moon land the first woman and person of color on the moon, include a space tourist, or all of these. And you can see that we've got some diagrams here. Um, I'm sure they're not showing up awesomely for you guys, but I can't help <laughs> showing them. Um, so the, the red lines, that's showing the orbit of, of Gateway. So that space station we showed you earlier that Orion docks to, and then uh, the green is is the trip out, and the blue is the trip home. Yep. yep. So the difference between one and two is it's just this craft going around. This time they're going to dock with Gateway and send the first woman and person of color down on the moon. <laughs> and eventually, we do hope to establish um, a permanent human presence, yeah. but like that's 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 down the road. Even Gateway yeah. won't be continuously inhabited the way space station is. Mm -hmm. um, which is part of the reason Canada Arm has to be so awesome. Um, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> a, a woman and a person of color. And I think that that is actually profound. I think that is, is. important. Mm -hmm. And there should be the first woman and person of color on the moon. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to the craters. <laughs> um, <laughs> So this is an image of, of the South Pole of the Moon. Um, and, uh, and the question here is, craters make good base camps on the Moon, true or false? <laughs> what are your thoughts on this, Cass? Oh, I have a lot of thoughts on this. Well, <laughs> I can tell you one of the main reasons why we're wanting to go back to the South Pole of the Moon is that um, there are, we've detected water ice in the form of ice in these permanently shadowed regions, which is what you can see in this image, those those dark spots, those never see the sun. Um, it's just the, the sun angle 
in the South Pole is always really, really low. And so it's one of the, you know, the best spots to find water on the moon. And so if you were going to build a habitat near water, it would probably be a good thing. Um, and we can see also the, the the rim of that crater is really bright, right? So mm -hmm. they're on the south, in, at the South Pole, there's also, that's most usually lit up, right? Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so it's definitely true um, that made, that, they would make good base camps or at least close by, but uh, you're almost always going to be somewhere close by <laughs> to a crater on the moon, um, but still. But yeah, so the, um, what are we saying? So the, the one, yeah, so in the, both of the poles and the moon, the, the sun is really low in the, in the, we'll call it the lunar sky, um, but it's, all, it's almost always shining. So, but if you're on the equator in the moon, there's, they actually have night and day, but in the poles, they don't have night and day. There's, the sun just kind of bobs around the horizon. Kind of like in the, you know, in, in the summer uh, in the North Pole uh, on the Earth, <laughs> but less so. <laughs> less so. Um, so this is just, you know, an artist's idea of what, what base camp might look like. Um, you can see there's a lot of components. Um, <laughs> spacesuits yeah, rover, maybe even like a mobile home kind of thing they're they're, they're planning on um and then sort of a, a base habitat as well so all of these will eventually be landed on the moon hopefully um yeah, exciting all times yeah wonderful <laughs> science okay oh and somebody wanted me to mention that roberta bondar is an honorary life member of science north okay so over the next five years uh the lunar exploration accelerator program LEAP, mm -hmm. space people like they love acronyms, um, will infuse <laughs> this much money into the Canadian space sector, $50 million, $100 million, or $150 million. So this would be money that's going to um, research institutes, mm -hmm. different you know, organizations, not for profits, that sort of thing. Just people doing anything that was gonna like help us get to the moon sooner. They're funding uh, rover programs, they're funding medical programs, they're funding um, food uh, technology programs and satellites. So many things have gone into this program, as well as a lot of outreach um, endeavors. <laughs> so, you know. like, this is jobs yeah. too, right? Yeah, this is jobs. This is definitely Space jobs. jobs too. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to go with the biggest value here. <laughs> Yes, 150 million, which, you know, in terms of like space, you know, that's not like, it's not all unreasonable. I think it could be more. I wouldn't complain. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, uh, <laughs> they've, they've been, they've, you know, the, the space agency has been putting so much money into a lot of different um, sectors uh, lately. And it's just it's mostly, it's all good news. Yeah. <laughs> More science. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, so we're talking about Canada and space. Um, Canada's strength, strengths in space do not include artificial intelligence, robotics, science, maple syrup, <laughs> or health. <laughs> uh, hmm. Canada have, has so many strengths in the space sector. Um, but we're just uh, and, we, were, and we were like the second ones to get a satellite up, right? Like early on, the Alouette, yeah, Alouette. the Alouette satellite. Mm -hmm. yep. So we've we've, all, we've been there from the beginning, <laughs> <laughs> and we actually I think we have the prototype for the Alouette in, at my museum. Oh wow! Yeah, so we just have, we have like a little model at, at my museum. <laughs> <laughs> you win. Woo! I win this one. But <laughs> Um, maple syrup, uh, I can tell you, is, has been to space. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's, it's a astronaut favorite. But I'm gonna go with. Oh wait, is not one of our strengths. Yeah. It's maple, syrup. <laughs> maple syrup. I mean, it could, it could. This one's arguable. It's arguable. I don't know if you got it, so we're good. <laughs> define strength. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Definitely a strength of the culture. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone yeah. loves maple syrup. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. All right. The 
the Canadian Space Agency, CSA, awarded the contract to establish the technical requirements to build Canada Arm 3 to Mission Control Space Surfaces in Ottawa, Ontario, uh, Honeywell in Cambridge, Ontario, MDA in Brampton, Ontario, or Canadensis, am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Aerospace yeah. Corporation in Caledon, Ontario. <laughs> so um, these are all real space companies. <laughs> Yes. They're all great space companies. They all have, uh, you know, they each have their strengths, you know, in, mm -hmm. in, in that previous slide, they, they fit into different strengths. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I can say that the Ontario ones, there are space companies all across Canada um, mm -hmm. as well. And Honeywell used to be called Comdev. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, and then it, I think it ate up another company as well. <laughs> and, and Honeywell worked on the James Webb Space Telescope. They did. Yes. Um, but Oh, that's a good spread on that one. Remember, yeah. So yeah, it's <laughs> MDA in Brampton, Ontario mm -hmm. has that. But um, hundreds of organizations across Canada will be involved in building Canada Arm 3. So they, they are setting the technical requirements and they did build Canada Arm 1 and Canada Canada Arm 2, um, but there's it's not just them. They're not doing it alone, right? Collaboration the, the name yep. of the game in space. <laughs> yep. And of course, MDA is responsible, you know, it was, you know, leading leading the, the construction of, of both Canada Arm 1 and 2 as well. Yeah. So, and Dexter. And Dexter. Don't forget yeah. Dexter. Actually, yeah. so on the on Gateway, there's going to be kind of a Dexter equivalent as well. There's Canada Arm 3, and it's got another little little arm yeah we're going to talk yeah. about more about fun arm. funky stuff okay so. we're going to get there <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go next question so canada arm three <laughs> is a space robot <laughs> with uh -huh. artificial intelligence that can maintain itself and run experiments mm. while astronauts are away from the space station is this the plan or science fiction so as you already said, Gateway is not always going to have astronauts on it. You know, ISS is basically permanently habited, inhabited, um, but Gateway might only have astronauts there maybe a month of the year. And so the rest of that time, uh, if you want to get anything done there, we're going we're gonna to have to come up with ways to do that. <laughs> so hmm. um, maybe another thing we could say about CanArm3 is although Gateway is going to start to be built very soon and they'll be setting up the first pieces. Um, CanArm3 won't be sent up and added until I think 2026 at the earliest. I think that's right. Yeah. 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 So it's a little ways off. And then of course that's going to depend so on when Gateway launches and you know yep. the schedules are are slidey. Shifting, but that's shifting. okay, right? We don't want to rush. We saw what happened yeah. with James Webb. There is uh oh look at that. Yes. It is the plan. Right <laughs> This is what we're doing. We're building the plan. a space robot with artificial intelligence that's going to run experiments <laughs> in the, and it can repair and maintain itself with its cool little like second smaller arm that can kind of crawl around and they have a comms link and they can talk to each other. And yep. uh, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> There's some pretty impressive technologies that they're working on right now and they're, it's, uh, you know, in development, but it'll be pretty cool to see when it happens. Yes. Um, I just want to give a shout out to the smart squid. I'm loving your your interjections. Thank you. Very cool. There's a whole thing going on in the comment section, which is awesome. I'm not paying enough attention to the comments. <laughs> it's I'm hard to go to back see. now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Next question. A rover is not. I like these ones. I like telling you lots of things. So <laughs> to put it all out there. Um, so it is not. Uh, an off-road mobile robot, it is not remotely controlled, something Canada has built a lot of, a replacement for an astronaut, or an essential tool in space exploration. So which one of these things is a robot, a rover, not? Hmm. hmm. What do you think? In your experience with rovers, Cass, what would you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would define a rover as a robot. It's definitely a type of robot. Mm -hmm. and, and this is one of the CSA's robots. It does have air in its tires. It's on <laughs> <but>. <laughs> um, 
Who is it? So a rover is not remotely controlled. Well, that depends. A rover is something Canada has built a lot of. Well, we already mentioned that CSA has lots of them. And it's not just actually some of those companies that you mentioned before oh, built a bunch of Here's our countdown. Oh, I'm going to say replacement for an astronaut. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Rovers are not replacements for astronauts, but they are great helpers. And they are, um, of course, on, on Mars and on the moon doing a lot of the forework. Like, they are um, helping out a lot. Yeah. Rovers, spacecraft, we send them when we when it's too difficult to do things ourselves. There's things that they can do that we can't. And there's definitely things that astronauts can do that rovers will never be able to do. So that's yeah. why it's just not a complete replacement, but we definitely send them in when when we can't get somewhere too. Yeah. And I, I imagine a future where you're you're there and you're exploring, you're doing your science and you have your rover with you and it's like it's got voice mm -hmm. commands and it's just, it's like helping you <laughs> out, it's carrying the heavy stuff. Um, do you want to tell us a bit about this picture? That's sure. your name, the pink. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, this is a few years back. We were doing uh, a simulated uh, mission, actually to pretend to go on the moon. Uh, and we were working with the um, University of Toronto and Western. And this is the Rock 6 rover. It's got six wheels. It's got a bunch of different science instruments on it, but we couldn't input all of the science instruments. So I'm actually pretending to be the rover arm in the background. And I've got a, a rock drill and I'm taking a sample. And then there's a room, you know, in London, Ontario, pretending to be mission control. And they're, you know, uh, sending commands to this rover and uh, and its arm. <laughs> <laughs> to take samples. And this is in Sudbury. This is actually in the, an HCA sand and gravel pit uh, oh, in Sudbury, cool. Ontario. Yeah. So we're, we're in the Sudbury impact structure. This, and I mean, we have a history of, of hosting, you know, astronauts mm -hmm. training. Um, Apollo air astronauts came and trained here in Sudbury because we mm -hmm. have a giant crater. So mm -hmm. including Harrison Schmidt, including Harrison Schmidt. Yeah. yeah. Into Sudbury. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we were talking about, um, day and night on the moon and of course one of the, the like there's a lot of challenges to being on the moon um so here's a question about the moon imagining being there how long is a lunar night so is it is it 12 hours is it <laughs> two weeks or is it a full month so to answer this you got to think about uh the phases of the moon and so the same face of the moon always faces the the earth but we know that it goes through phases. So think about how long it takes to go from, you know, a full moon to another full moon. Mm -hmm. And that will give you an idea of how long a lunar night is. Yeah, but we're asking for, for the night, not the whole cycle. All right, yeah. so divide by two. <laughs> <laughs> month comes from the word moon, right? That's not a coincidence. So that was, the moon cycles were a way that we, we kept track of time and people still do keep track of time. Yeah, that does make sense. Mm -hmm. One minute. So, oh, wow. I, I, I saved a hard one for yeah. that. There's a spread. <laughs> I should be doing more hits. <laughs> yeah. So it's about, it, yeah, go ahead. It's <laughs> about 14 days. Yeah. So 20, I think 29 days is one lunar, you know, full cycle. Uh, so it's, yes, 20. So there's like the, there's like, the phase that we see, so what we see mm. is actually a 29.5 day cycle because the moon kind of, like the earth is Bubbles. moving through space along with the moon, but like physically in space, it takes 27.3 days for the moon to go around the earth. <laughs> so, um, but from like full moon to full moon, 29.5, but it's about two weeks. Um, yeah. Yeah. So well done everyone. So um, that was our last question question who will be on so we we're about to find out <laughs> <laughs> um but don't put your phones down because i do have three more questions the canadian space agency has curiosities they would like to know Ooh. a couple things few things so please do uh keep your device handy to answer those questions and let's find out who our lucky winner is of some science north swag or passes if you live close enough that you can actually come visit us, which we would love for you to do as soon as we're open. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh, and Peter took the lead. Woo! Wow, congrats. Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 
the deal here is that you need to take a screenshot of your of your winning screen there and you're going to email it to our marketing team uh, the email is going to pop up there in the chat renata is going to provide that to you so just email us let us know what you want and uh oh yay me yay there you are awesome okay cool um okay let's do our our survey questions real quick and um while we're doing this maybe we can um check out if there's some more questions in the comments okay so did you have fun um this is you know, going out to everyone we just want to know like did we make it fun <laughs> oh, possibly didn't. i'm sorry <laughs> okay wonderful good to know okay now these next two questions are just for our under 18 audience we're interested in in reaching the youth and we want to know um, if you are under 18, did you learn anything new about uh, Canada's activities in space? So is there some stuff there that you, you maybe didn't know that we were awesome at artificial intelligence? In space, you know, like we've got Canadians working on AI for like the Mars rover. Like we, we're doing it. We're doing the AI. I like AI. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Love it. And then our next, our last question is, um, are you a bit more interested in, in steam and space after, after seeing this? Maybe like hearing that there, there's money in the sector. It's a growing sector in Canada. You could potentially get a job, maybe drawing comic books. My friend Aaron does that for NASA. Dream job. All right. <laughs> Good. Okay. Thank you. Um, so cast... Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to join us this evening and to share your amazing um, experience at Mastassen. That was just in October, so a very fresh and new. Um, thanks for being here. My pleasure. <laughs> and um, thank you, merci, miigwech, to everyone out there. I'm really glad you joined us. If you like this content, um, please donate through Eventbrite, like and subscribe for more. And uh, thank you again to the Canadian Space Agency who um, supported this program financially. And uh, yeah, thank you. Merci. Oh, wait, questions. I was supposed to <laughs> answer questions. We have minutes. If, you, if you guys want to hang out um, and we can do some Q&A, uh, we will stick around for a few more minutes to do that. If, uh, if you want to sign off, that's cool too. <laughs> okay, let's go to our comment section. Um, Oh, yeah. I, feel, I feel like I was neglecting the, the chat box, so I'm trying to go through to see. Oh, those moon faces are lovely. Lovely. And yes, the next space trivia is February 17th with a friend of both of ours, um, Raymond Francis. He is actually the one I was referring to who works on, on AI. Um, and he is also uh, completely involved in uh, the Perseverance Mars rover work. So our next uh, space trivia is going to be all about the exploration of Mars next step after after the moon. Awesome. And yes, the link to register for the next space trivia is in the comments. Thanks, Heather. Appreciate it. Oh, it's good to hear, Nicole. Awesome. Miigwech Guru. Appreciate that. And Kimberly's coming back in February. Awesome. You're going to love Raymond. He's wonderful. You know, Raymond actually uh, grew up in Sudbury and he applied for my position at Science North. He didn't get an interview and uh, now he's working for NASA. So. Now he drives two rovers on Mars. <laughs> but at heart, he is a science communicator. He loves it. So he he's going to be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll just pick out so someone asked, do we know how many volcanoes there are on the moon? Uh, we don't know exactly how many, but I will tell you there were, they're no longer active, but there were lots. Um, a lot of very large ones that dumped out la a lot of lava uh, at the same time, or for, for very long periods of time, you know, like single uh, events that filled up those, those giant basins on the moon. Um, what made all the craters on the moon? Those were impacts by asteroids or comets um, of various sizes. And of course, the much larger ones, you know, back in, in, the, in the history of the moon, um, about 3.8, 3.9 billion years ago, 
like early on in the formation of the solar system, there was a lot more collisions going on. It was a really, we call it the, the late heavy bombardment. And so a lot of those large impacts, um, you know, happen a lot more frequently. And then with time, they happen less and less frequently. So the smaller ones are, are typically the more recent ones. Thank goodness. So like we, I mean, <laughs> it is, there is still a chance, like, you know, kind of referencing uh, the don't look up, but keep looking up. <laughs> yep. uh, so like in the, the premise of that movie is that there's a, an asteroid heading towards Earth and it's going to annihilate us. And of course, it's a metaphor for climate change and people like not not paying attention, paying attention. <laughs> yeah um <laughs> um i, yeah. I don't know they did a, they did a pretty good job with that um with that movie and on, at least on the science side you know I, it was supposed to be you know frustratingly funny if you know what i mean yeah but, but um you know they they said a 10 kilometer wide comet and that's about the size of the comet that impacted the gulf of mexico uh and um you know 66 million years ago and the you know the extinction of the dinosaurs and all that and so they kind of were linking those two and as a result there was major climate change as a result of that impact mm -hmm. so there are definitely some other links some links oh yeah and that's what that's where we were going with that is there aren't there aren't so many of those big comets um around now like the solar system is no. stabilized like not that we don't have to watch out for it but it's uh not something we're super worried about not as there much are yeah there are so we have um there's organizations around the world that are currently tracking all of the objects we call them near earth objects and there's about 28,000 of them um but we know where they all are at least those that are sort of dangerous size mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're tracking and, and I can tell you that don't worry there's definitely nothing large going to like hit the us within the next years. 100 years or so yeah yeah, yeah we're good okay, so Vanessa, all the time yeah Vanessa is asking um what are the names of the Canadian astronauts participating in the Artemis mission I think you have a little bit of like a so um I think NASA picked is it 16 or 18 there's there's quite a few of them um from all shades of life, at least for the American astronauts. Um, and then we, of the four Canadian astronauts, they haven't chosen which uh, which one's gonna go on Artemis two and which one will be. We actually have a guaranteed second Canadian astronaut gonna participate in another future Artemis mission as well. So at least have two of them going, but we don't know their names yet. Um, so Matthew Dominic is one. A lot of the astronauts that you've actually recently seen go to the International Space Station, um, uh, like Christina Koch and um, oh God, like the last couple of missions, they were full of Artemis astronauts. So a lot of them are veteran astronauts. They're not very many um, rookie astronauts like Dominic <laughs> um, that, that haven't been to space yet, I guess. I should say rookie astronaut. <laughs> He's been an astronaut for two years uh, at least, but you know what I mean. So we have, a, yeah, we have a Night's Fire um, has a comment, the celestial origins of the day names are easier to see in French than English. That's, that's definitely true, right? We have like Vendredi, like Venus. Oh, yeah. Mercredi, right? Mm -hmm. Wednesday, Mercury. Mercury. I, I'm not, I'm not fluently bilingual. I'm trying to think of the other. <laughs> uh, Jeudi, right? Jupiter. Yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. there's, there's actually connection there. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew some of them, but I didn't realize all of them were, but that makes sense. Um, <laughs> that makes sense, you know, because uh, early on, our timekeeping had everything to do with the stars. So, mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Um, what else is on here? I, I think I've gotten through. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sunday, Moon Day, Mars Day, yeah. Oh, someone heard me on CBC. Thank you. <laughs> wow, that was a great interview. That was awesome. Oz was on there. We saw we saw pictures of Oz. Yeah. Yeah, and Oz is actually so planning fun. to come back to the Sudbury area for Stars Over mm -hmm. Corny uh, in the fall. That's a ways off. But. Um, yeah, so Oz and crew, they, they go back once a year generally because he runs a, an impact crater course uh, in the area. So almost at least once a year. So you should make sure to find out when he's coming and drag him into the... <laughs> Drag them over to Science Stars and do something. Definitely. And I think um, uh, another good idea that everyone seems to agree on is that we need to make uh, maple syrup on the moon. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> mm. That's now, a lot of sap. Okay. I think maybe we would just take the maple syrup because like the currency of space travel is weight and water, sap, <laughs> what have you, right? That's why it's so cool that they are like recycling mm. all water on the International Space Station now um, and take our freeze-dried food. So maybe it would be like freeze-dried maple syrup. I'm going to say, my knee-jerk reaction is, yes, do it. And then logistically, yeah, maybe yeah. not so much. <laughs> but we should take some, some freeze bread. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, definitely. Or like maple syrup toffee, latir. Yeah, you could. Mm, so good. You could do that. All right. All right. Such good questions. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, um, thanks for being here and participating and all of that. But we are at 8 o'clock. We should uh, go <laughs> take care of our kids. <laughs> um but yeah, like I hope to see a bunch of you here in February with Raymond, February 17th, third Thursday. Easy to remember. Uh, thanks again, Cass. Always a pleasure to spend time with you. My pleasure. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>